You've just found out that $25,000 Kaggle competition ends today. Competition is fierce, but you've got to beat the others and claim your prize. What will you do? XG boost. Stop. Let's start from the start. We're going to give you a glimpse into why XG Boost wins so many ML competitions. We're talking building decision trees fast, optimizing discrete variables and approximating quantile plots. Let's get started. XG Boost is a gradient boosting decision tree algorithm. A decision tree or card algorithm can be used for both regression and classification. A tree is made of a root node, branches, decision nodes and leaf nodes. Starting from the root node, at each node in a tree, a decision is made to go left or right down the tree based on the input and the split point of that node. This continues until we reach a leaf node, where we output its value. Given enough depth, the tree can achieve zero training loss and generalization becomes a major issue. So going shallow and building another tree has been shown to generalize better. Building on the cart model, boosting goes a few steps further, and once we reach a specified depth or number of leaves, we build another tree. This is called an ensemble model. XG Boost uses a boosting ensemble model, hence the word boost, where it trains multiple trees one after another, and each tree improves upon the previous by reducing the loss of the current ensemble. Each tree's predictions are then combined, and in the case of gradient boosting, with a learning rate, learnt from another dataset assigned to each tree. But, how are these trees made? Let's consider an ensemble's output as f of x theta, where theta is the parameters of the tree. Namely, Q that maps data examples to the index of a leaf, and O is the output associated with each leaf. Basically, Q is the collection of all possible tree decisions, and O is the collection of those decisions' outputs. Let FK of X theta K be the output of tree K within an ensemble, and theta K contains the Q and O associated with each tree. With this in mind, we minimize the loss by constructing the new tree such that it predicts the residuals of the current ensemble. Gradient boosting furthers this by considering the new tree as a gradient descent step and sets the negative gradient of the loss as an approximate residual, and thus we are optimizing the new tree on these gradients. In SML we have been taught how to optimize continuous variables, but what about discrete ones? When we are constructing each individual tree, we need to work out the optimal split points for the tree to split on. The best optimization we can do for discrete variables is to use a greedy algorithm for decision trees, meaning we make the optimal decision at each split point without thinking about future split points. So, for every feature xj, say weight and shoe size, we create a set of candidate split points and choose the best feature split point that maximizes something called the gain. Without going into too much detail, we can calculate the gain by using scores from the new leaves and a score from the parent node. This way, we can incorporate our previous predictions into influencing how we construct our tree. We choose the split that results in the highest gain. The issue is, the greedy algorithm compares every possible split point on every possible feature. It's too slow, and the data is so large it doesn't all fit in computer memory anyway. We need a better way of finding fewer split points to optimize this discrete variable. Heuristically, good spacing between quantiles of data points leads to better split points as each weighted quantile should contain similar elements. This is called the approximate greedy algorithm, and we usually evaluate around 33 weighted quantiles before making a final decision. Now you try to calculate the weighted quantiles, but your computer crashes again. The memory usage is too big. XGBoost solves this with the weighted quantile sketch and parallel computing. You break the data set up by its columns, features, into a collection of data sets, the datasets are split up and data points are then distributed to several other computers. Each computer then calculates an exact quantile summary of its allocated data sample. This circumvents the memory issues we were experiencing earlier, but how do we combine this data and get it back to the source? The answer lies in the original XGBoost paper. Right at the bottom here, it outlines a two-page proof on how to merge two quantile summaries together and how to reduce their memory size by pruning them. You decide to give it a read. We start with definition A1. The paper defines two rank functions, which are basically functions that take in a data point and give you an upper estimate of where it ranks among other data points in the dataset D it came from, and a lower estimate of this. The weight function is also defined, and it is the subtraction of these two values. 
A quantile summary is a collection of these three functions in addition to the ordered data set itself. The point of a quantile summary is to answer queries regarding where an input ranks in the data set. These functions are perfect at outputting the rank of a data point that belonged to the original data set they were derived from, but they need to be extended to rank data points outside of D. That's where definition A2 comes in. A2 allows for data points that do not align exactly with data points in D to be ranked. If the data point is greater than the maximum in D, it is ranked the same as the maximum in D. If it is less than the minimum, it is ranked zero. If it is between two points in D, the ranks and weights of the points it is between are combined to estimate the rank of itself. With this, we define an epsilon approximate quantile summary, which bounds our error in our approximations in a measurable way. We will see why this is useful later. A2 tells us our initial summary is zero approximate, meaning it can answer queries regarding upper and lower estimates of rankings without introducing any additional error. Coming back to our parallel computing, once we have constructed the quantile summaries, they are zero approximate. A3 in the paper describes how we can merge two summaries together to create a new summary. We represent this as follows. Notice D1 and D2 have been unioned. We basically just add the upper, lower, and weight functions together to form the new upper, lower, and weight functions. On top of this, theorem 1 gives us that the new summary is the maximum epsilon approximate of both summaries. Thus, the new summary would be zero approximate if both were originally zero approximate. So we've been able to combine both summaries, but the memory usage is still large. We need to find a way to reduce it. That's where pruning comes in. Pruning allows us to reduce the size of a quantile summary with the trade-off of increasing our epsilon error. We use a query function, algorithm 4, with a memory budget of b to construct a new quantile summary q prime. The result is a new quantile summary that only needs to keep track of b plus 1 data points. Theorem A2 shows that this new quantile summary is epsilon plus 1 on b approximate thus introducing error into our summaries. This is okay though, as we've been able to reduce our memory usage and we're ready to test out all the split candidates super fast. In XGBoost, we only want around 33 quantiles to query for split points anyway. Now you know how to put XGBoost together. From gradient boosting to optimizing split points, let's go out there and win this thing. Couldn't have done it without you, XGBoost.